What up, though? I am Fontaine the Titan. And we about to get into the law of vibration, getting back into the universal laws, the seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven hermetic principles. And right now we on the law of vibration. If you missed uh, the law of correspondence and the law of mentalism, go back and review so that you can be ready for this one because all we're doing is just building one on top of the other, all right, to higher levels. And this law of vibration is really what it's all about, building on the higher levels, understanding what this law of vibration is. And when we go get into is, of course, we're going to get back into the Kabbalion to uh, break it down to its ancient uh, text. We're going to get into... Uh, this book here, uh, 30 Second Quantum Theory, okay? So we can break it down on a high science level, right? You're going to see why I'm running that out in a second. Of course, we always got the Ancient Future book. We're going to get into this as well. And got this uh, last book here, Quantum DNA Healing, Consciousness uh, Techniques for Altering Your Genetic destiny right this book is dope 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 as well by uh letha s hawk and uh we gonna get into this cabalion real quick right get this get this uh going and popping right the principle of vibration nothing rests everything moves everything vibrates it says this principle embodies the truth that everything is in motion everything vibrates nothing is at rest Facts which modern science endorses and which each with which each new scientific discovery tends to verify. All right. And yet this hermetic principle was enunciated thousands of years ago by the masters of the ancient Egypt. This principle explains that the differences between uh, manifestations of matter, energy, mind and spirit result largely from the varying rates of vibration. From the all, which is pure spirit, down to the grossest form of matter, all is in vibration. The higher the vibration, the higher the position on the scale. The vibration of spirit is at an infinite rate of intensity and rapidity that it is practically at rest, just as a rapidly moving wheel seems to be motionless. And at the other end of the scale, there are gross forms of matter whose vibrations are so low as to seem as rest, at rest. It says, between these poles, there are millions upon millions of varying degrees of vibration. From corpuscle and electron, atom and molecule, to worlds and universes, everything is in vibratory motion, right? It says, this is also true on the planes of energy and force, which are but varying degrees of vibration, and also on the mental planes, whose states depend upon vibr vibrations and even on the spiritual planes. An understanding of this principle with the appropriate formulas enables hermetic students to control their own mental vibrations as well as others. It says the masters also apply this principle to the conquering of natural phenomena in various ways. It says, quote, he who understands the principle of vibration has grasped the scepter of power, says one of the old writers, right? So when we talk about vibration, right, we see vibration change states in many different ways. And the example I'm about to give you right now is water, right? Watch how water changes when you freeze it. It becomes ice. Boom. And when you boil it, it evaporates. It becomes gas. So you could have one thing that has three different states on this physical plane that we see based just on temperature. And we know that as you increase the temperature, uh, the molecules and everything move faster and spread out faster. And that's how you get gas. When you freeze it, the molecules become contracted and colder and they stick together. And that's how the water sticks together to become ice. So we already see just on every single day stuff, how the law of vibration is taking place, okay? So what we got to understand is, as they say, vibration manifests on all levels, every single level. So we got the physical level, the mental level, the spiritual level, all right? So let's break down some definitions here because I don't want nobody to get lost, right? So what we got to understand is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with when it comes to the law of vibration, we also got to deal with it on 
the metaphysical side of the game, all right? So metaphysical is a division of philosophy that is concerned with the fundamental nature of reality and being. Just as physics deals with the laws that govern the physical world, metaphysics describes what is beyond physics, okay? It describes what's beyond physics, the nature and origin of reality itself, the immortal soul, and the existence of a supreme being, okay? So what we got to understand is for centuries, years, thousands of years, this is what's a big debate that's been going on because even as science has evolved, they still don't want to take it to the level and say, hey, it's, it's a higher level of consciousness. It's a, it's a divine being that has, a, and we are a part of all of that. You see what I'm saying? So what you got to understand is the idea of, of an atheist, okay? See, an atheist, they look at modern science and they say, all right, we got the Big Bang Theory and we got uh, uh, Darwin's Theory of Evolution and we come from monkeys, which came from microscopic organisms and everything evolved in that way. However, when you become an atheist and you take on that concept, you eliminate the God aspect. And it's so many mathematical uh, uh, propositions and equations that cannot be explained by modern science that it's only a divine way that this could be all created that you got to understand, right? So for the people out there who want to be on the atheist side of the game, good luck to you, you know, if that's what you want to believe because I ain't here to change nobody beliefs, you know, whether you're a Christian, Muslim, atheist, or whatever. Believe what you want to believe, but I'm here to present the facts on the way that I understand them so maybe you can go back, look, research, and understand for yourself, right? So when we when we start looking at uh, the physical, right, how our physical bodies react to things, right, our physical comes from our emotional state as well. And we get our emotional state from our thoughts. OK, so what they did was there's a science called uh, uh, kines kinesiology, right? And kinesiology is the study of the principles of mechanics and anatomy in relation to human mu movement. Kinesiology addresses uh, physiological, mechanical, and psychological mechanisms. Application of kinesiology to human health include biomechanics and orthopedics, strength and conditioning, and sport and exercise. Studied human and animal motion include measures from motion and tracking systems, electrophysiology, uh, muscle and brain activity, various methods for monitoring physiological function and other behavioral and cognitive research, right? So what you got to understand is how powerful the mind is when it comes to uh, something like the, the physical, how, how powerful that mind is. There is a phenomenon that happens like when a, a war veteran gets their leg cut off. And if you ask them, they'll tell you, I can still feel my leg. It's gone. It's gone, but I can still feel where my leg was at. I know it was there. You know, they can tell you that I still feel my leg. And then when they get their prosthetic leg, they're able to walk on it. They'd be like, ah, it, it feel right again, or at least as close to right as they can conceptualize, right? Because then their whole idea, their mind is still sending impulses to their uh, leg where their leg used to be at. So there is no leg there, but yet they're still feeling impulses in the area where there is nothing there. So that vibration is still kicking in, right? It gets real, real deep. It gets real, real hardcore, right? So what we got to understand is, is that mentally we get to a point to where we create our emotions, right? And using the uh, science of kinesiology, they were able to measure uh the 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 vibratory hertz the frequency of feelings right and i'm gonna just run down these through real quick you know so you can have an idea of what we're working with here right so when we talk about getting on a higher level getting on the highest level of of of, of our spiritual awakening our understanding this starts by getting into our higher vibratory states of emotion right so when they talk about the law of attraction, they tell you that you got to get on the vibration level of the things that you want to attract. And it starts by also being on a high level frequency emotionally to be able to attract those things because you're not going to be able to attract them in lower vibratory states. OK, so the highest vibratory state emotionally that you can be in is enlightenment, which is 700 hertz. 
Peace is next at 600 hertz. Then it goes down to Joy at 540, Love at 500, Reason at 400, Acceptance at uh, 350, right? Uh, willingness at 310, Neutrality at 250, Courage at 200, Pride at 175. Now we're starting to get into the good stuff, okay? Anger, 150 hertz. Desire, 125 hertz. Fear at 100 hertz, okay? So keep in mind that enlightenment is 10 times, vibrating 10 times at a higher level than fear. And most people are out here vibrating in the state of fear, right? And fear controls most of what people doing out here as humans based on how they got this world constructed, right? But they even got levels lower than fear that they measure, which is grief at 75 hertz, apathy at 50 hertz, guilty at 30, and shame at 20, all right? So I hope ain't none of y'all feeling guilt and shame out here because that's some of the lowest vibratory uh, frequencies that you can be on, you know? So we got to raise our vibrations up mentally so that it can affect our body physically and then we could be able to manifest the things that we want. Because what we're talking about here is reprogramming the subconscious mind ultimately. And even if you got to fake it till you make it and just keep on saying you're happy to yourself, which we go get into that in, into another video. But what we got to do is raise our vibrations up. But this is just another way that vibration manifests into everything. OK, because as I say, I got these books over here. Right. Let's get into 30-second ah, quantum theory, the 50 most thought-provoking quantum concepts, each explained in a half a minute, right? So let's see if we can get through these in a half a minute. <laughs> so I'm not going to go through all of them, but it's two in particular that I wanted to expound on if you uh, give me a second here, right? So what we have here is the wave-particle experiment, okay? Right? So the wave-particle experiment or the uh, wave-particle duality, right, was, uh, it says here in 1905, Einstein explained the photoelectric effect, the emissions of electrons from metallic surfaces when irradiated with light. By assuming that light consists of particles that kick out electrons from metals, Einstein realized that these light particles were the quanta discovered by Planck. However, the idea of light particles, later called photons, was seen as contradictory to the behavior of light as a wave in a phenomenon such as diffraction. Okay? It says, white light is spread out onto the colors of the rainbow as seen in reflected light on a CD or interference. The fact that two light beams created by a double slit can cancel each other out. This contradiction preoccupied Einstein until 1923 when... Louis de Broglie postulated the idea that if light photons can behave either as particles or waves, the same should also be true of other particles, such as electrons, all right? Erwin uh, Scheindiger subsequently picked up Broglie's idea, and by looking at electrons and atoms as waves, he calculated the wavelengths of the emitted light. In 1927, George Paget Thompson and Clinton Davison show that a narrow electron beam, when it passes through a thin metal film or crystal, spreads out in a diffraction pattern of concentric rings, thus proving the Rojal's theory. So what they're saying is, is that light can act as a particle, as something solid, or it can act like as a wave, okay? So we see light all the time. We see light manifested in the rainbow, in the uh, seven colors of the rainbow, which we know that uh, those are frequencies in which if you go higher than the rainbow, then there's spectrums of colors that we cannot see. So you got your microwave and those, that's it's called a microwave because it's giving out microwaves, waves that's going higher than the frequency of uh, the elect electromagnetic spectrum, okay? And it's going so fast that it can heat up your food, right? So you got fire that you use with your stove, that's only going at a certain temperature, right? So the microwaves go at an even higher temperature than that. But what we got with the wave particle duality is, is that now it's acting like something solid. 
So light can act like something solid or it can act like a wave. And then when they did this on electrons, it did the same thing. So now we're getting a little bit deeper because our whole existence is built upon electrons and photons and electromagnet electromagnetism, right? So if the purpose of the experiment, what they didn't tell you in this 30 second uh, uh, thing is, is that when they observed it is when it changed into a particle, right? So when they weren't looking at it, it was a wave. And when they were looking at it, it changed into a particle. And I have uh, in my uh, like videos, you can go over there and see an example of the wave, partic wave particle experiment in live action. Just picked out a little nice little short video for you that gives you a visual demonstration of what's going on. Because trying to explain it, you'd be like, man, what is this dude talking about? But basically, everything has a duality. We are not only... Uh, solid beings, we are also light beings. So as I said before, we say that we got the five senses. I say we only have the sense of touch because everything has to vibrate and, to, and intermingle with the vibrations and the energy in order for there to be a phenomenon, in order for there to be a reaction, all right? But we will also get into this other one that I got here real quick, real quick, real quick. And this one is quantum teleportation, right? So, in quantum teleportation, it says, on a dark moonless night in 2012, scientists set the current distant record for quantum teleportation. So, y'all, everybody out here acting like, oh, we can't teleport, we can't teleport. I'm telling you, they got some stuff going on. They just can't figure out how it works, right? But I'm going to get into that in one second, right? It says, they set the current distance for quantum teleportation 89 miles using a laser uh, to being photons between different islands of the canaries. These photons were intimately connected to one another via the quantum property of entanglement, so that an action made on one of the pair immediately affected its entangled partner. However, the distance. So regardless of how far away you put in these electrons, if you do one to one thing, it's doing the same thing to another at the same time. No delay simultaneously, and that's what they can't figure out, right? So uh, it goes on to say uh, they then use the pair uh, as a quantum communication line to send information about another quantum object, reconstructing it at the other end of the line. Quantum teleportation sounds much like sci-fi, so when computer scientist Charles Bennett of IBM in New York and colleagues first proposed it in 1993, it attracted immediate attention. Um, so I'm not going to read the rest of that because it ain't saying no more than what you need to hear as far as what we got going on, okay? Because what we got going on here is modern science is showing you that even on the smallest quantum levels, the law of vibration is in effect, okay? But they don't want to go on the metaphysical side of the game and say that what is have the the ether and the controlling aspects of everything and the spirit that's involved see so when you start talking about spirit that means you're going into the other side of the game the metaphysical side of the game right so scientists want to try to prove their stuff in this physical reality but certain things cannot be proven physically so you got to go on the metaphysical side of the game. You got to go on the mental side of the game. You got to go on the spiritual side of the game in order to get a greater understanding of how this reality works in order to make your life better. Because when we start talking about vibrating on higher levels, we're talking about spiritually, mentally, and physically, okay? So even the foods that you eat have a vibratory essence to them, right? That's why a lot of people nowadays be like, don't eat meat because they don't want to eat anything dead because that's not vibrating at a level. If you eat fruits and vegetables and all of that other cool stuff, guess what? Those foods have a higher vibratory sense to them. And therefore, as above, so below law correspondence, you're putting what's in you good and a high vib vibratory rate, then what's, you're going to be in a high vibratory vibratory rate all right so what's really really dope is this little this little part in uh ancient future right i'm telling you the law of vibration is in effect on all levels okay it says within the last 60 years 
Another form of mind influence, mental telepathy, has been under close scrutiny in and around scientific laboratories. Experiments have shown that the temperature of the brain is increased in coordinates in accordance with the intensity of feeling and thought, and that there is undoubtedly a generation of energy which bears a very close resemblance to the process of the generation of electrical energy. As early as the 1920s, Western science, Western science was exploring the possibility of thought induction. All right. It says the eminent French scientist Camille Flammarion, who was doing extensive research on the subject during this period, concluded one mind can act at a distance upon another without the habitual medium of words or any other visible means of communication. Right. It appears to us altogether unreasonable to reject the conclusion if we accept the facts. The action of one human mind upon another from a distance is a scientific fact. What do y'all got to say about that? So modern science calls it quantum entanglement with two electrons far from distance being able to... Uh, enact upon each other simultaneously and we do it within ourselves and it's called mental te telepathy which has been proven as a scientific fact however they still don't know how it works because their definition of how it works is quantum entanglement but they can't figure out how quantum entanglement works okay so what they try to do is they try to break everything down to a physical level but we know it's beyond the physical okay so the law of vibration manifests on all levels, right? But we're going to take this one step further and we're going to hit you with Alethea S. Hawke's book, Quantum DNA Healing, Consciousness Techniques for Altering Your Genetic Destiny. And I say this book is really, really dope. And, uh, I'm going to just read, read a couple of things about it here, right? It says, clearly, DNA is far more than it has traditionally been viewed as. It is more than the instructions for building pieces of protein that produce biological responses in the physical body through chemistry that we know about and can measure, right? It says, instead, it has a quantum component as well. The double helix that we so commonly associate with DNA is a schematic representation, but not what DNA actually looks like in multidimensional or quantum form. It says three-dimensional animations show DNA as a compilation of shapes and building blocks that clump around each other in complex ways. However, it is generally accepted by, by the vast majority of those with more progressive spiritual beliefs and experience that we actually have 10 strands of multidimensional DNA in addition to the two strands of biological or chemical DNA characterized by the three-dimensional structure that science currently can see. It says these 10 strands represent the non-encoded portion of the chromosome, which are the quantum and spiritual aspects of who we are. This portion of our DNA contains a whole multitude of energies all organized in a non-linear, non-physical, multi-dimensional way. These energies describe our uniqueness and are a record of the memory of who we are as souls in each lifetime. It says this record includes our divine and biological origins, our karma, the blueprint of our energetic bodies, and our soul's purpose and life's lessons, our soul's records, which are the Akashic records, as well as additional aspects of ourselves, including our innate self and higher self, among other spiritual attributes. Attributes, right? It says the 90% of DNA in the reflection of, is a reflection of your spirituality. The Akashic record, the higher self that which you seek, that you call a portal to the other side, is there. In a quantum state, these things are not actually in the chemicals at all. Think of those chemicals together as a bridge, somehow a pipeline, a portal, or a quantum pointer to everything. Instead of thinking in a linear way that there is a compartment or a box where your higher self is, think of it as a doorway. 
If you could go there and see the quantum state of it, you will enter into a pipeline that takes you to everything that is. So understand that this 3D quantum chemical bridge is sacred influencer of the genome and is very large containing most of the information in the human blueprint for life, right? It says this description suggests that our quantum DNA is actually the pregenitor of our biological DNA and represents the ultimate origin of all information provided to the biological instruction sets contained within the protein encoded portion of the chromosome, right? So this is a little bit of uh, law of correspondence here because as above, so below, as within, so without. We got our DNA here physically, so we have to have our DNA uh, uh, spiritually as well on the metaphysical side of the game, right? And what you got to understand by that is that is vibrating too. So if you can get in tune with those vibrations, she's saying that she healed herself by doing this. This book is dope. And she get into some real hardcore stuff. And that's why I'm going to read this other part to you so that you can understand how deep and how hardcore this book is really going, right? It says, the subconscious mind and soul. It says, from a more spiritual perspective, according to Robert Dessler, we actually have 12 non-physical energetic bodies in addition to our physical body. They include the more commonly known ones such as the etheric body, the astral body, the mental body, emotional and soul bodies, among others. These bodies have numerous subconscious and subconscious, subconscious and conscious minds. The conscious mind functions as the working consciousness of a body and the subconscious mind as the recording, the recording device for the experience of the body. He says that the physical body is a lower vibratory expression of our greater self, right? So we have our greater self and this is just a vibration of that on a different level, right? He says that... Uh, the physical body is a lower vibratory expression of our greater self, and the subconscious mind of our physical body records all the beliefs, perceptions, judgments, and experience of our conscious minds. The origins of these beliefs can be cultural, religious, or faith-based, situational, or those we acquire through experience of daily life. We embody these in our attitudes, actions, and behaviors. When the body dies, the conscious and subconscious mind also dies. And the vibrational records that were previous held in the subconscious mind are moved to our soul's Akashic records. Thus, we inscribe the energy of these beliefs vibrationally on the Akash within our Akashic records, which is stored as memory within the crystalline portion of our DNA. This is dope, dope, dope. So, hey, you can believe it or not. You can take it for what it is. But what you have to understand is, regardless of whether you believe it or not, the law of vibration is in effect on all levels. On the spiritual level, on the mental level, and on the physical level. And through the law of correspondence, each one affects the other. So, as I said, if you want to get to changing your emotions, you got to change the way you think. So we got to start by changing the way we think so we can get on higher levels of vibration emotionally as well so that we could be able to manifest the reality that we want. Because uh, what it was saying was, it was saying that uh, one enlightened person at 700 hertz can affect 10 million people that's vibrating on a lower scale, right? So that's where it ends up balancing it out. They said that the average uh, emotional state of the of the world or the realm or the whatever you want to call it is 207 right and this is on a scale that go up to 700 we and, and if fear is at 100 we are just above fear basically so what you got to look at is look at how many people are around here into into a mental state of fear right so we got to get out of this fear-based vibration and get into higher levels of vibration so that we can be able to uh, affect ourselves on a sp more spiritual level, physically, mentally, and all of that, right? Because if we're not raising ourselves up, what are we doing out here? 
And like I say, I raised myself up by learning all type of new stuff, getting all of these cool little books, different little stuff that, you know, hey, I read this stuff and, and I get involved in it. I even, I got this other book over here too. Look, got this other book. It's called The Secret Language of Feelings, right? This book tells you how to transmute your feelings from one emotion to the other. This is dope. I suggest y'all get stuff like this so y'all can get a better understanding of what y'all doing out here. Because, hey, like I say, I used to didn't be a peaceful person. You know what I'm saying? I used to be out here fighting uh, uh, and causing all type of ruckus. You know, cussing out old ladies. I remember when I was in sixth grade, I cussed out a nun. You know what I'm saying? My mama asked me what I said, and I told my mama, look, this is what I said. She said, you can't be saying that to no nun. But, hey, you know, it is what it is. Back then, I knew better, but I still ain't care. But my point is, is that being able to understand where your emotions come from, how to control them, and how they affect you uh, physically, okay? And how your mental state and what you think affects your emotions, which ends up affecting and then getting on a higher level spiritually is what this is all about so that we can get in tune and get in touch with our higher selves, our divine spark, or whatever you want to call it. The true you, which who you really are. Um, recommend that y'all take a look at some of these books. Get involved. Increase your mind. Make it explode. Do something with it instead of sitting there and watching real basketball wives or, you know, watching uh, or playing Call of Duty all day, get into something that might help enlighten you. You know what I'm saying? Um, with that being said, I'm staying successful, peaceful, prosperous, and healthy, raising things on a super high level. I hope y'all got some good information out of this. You know, I wasn't trying to move y'all too fast. A lot of information got spread throughout here, but as we go forward, we're going to break a lot of these concepts down even further. So stay tuned. Get prepared for the next one because we're coming right back again, building things higher and higher. Uh, like, subscribe, and share. And peace.